From southern British Columbia to northern California, the Cascade Range is formed of an 800-mile chain of volcanoes. In the wake of the Mount St. Helens eruption, the U.S. Geological Survey established the Cascades Volcano Observatory in Vancouver in 1982. And then over time, it began to broaden. Uh, we began to expand our studies to other volcanoes in the Cascades. Uh, now that we knew what these volcanoes really were capable of doing. Of the five USGS volcano observatories, the Cascades Observatory is now the largest, with close to 80 permanent staff members. All of these volcanoes are still considered active geologically. If they had an eruption in the past 10,000 years, that's an indication that they could wake back up again. Since the beginning of the 18th century, the USGS says seven Cascade volcanoes have erupted. Over the last 4,000 years, eruptions have occurred at a rate of about two per century, some more explosive than others. Mount St. Helens is an outlier in the Cascades in terms of how frequently it erupts explosively. But we have a lot of other potentially hazardous volcanoes in the Cascades. Behind Mount St. Helens, Glacier Peak Volcano is the second most active explosive volcano in the Cascades. Right now, all the volcanoes in the Cascades are showing normal levels of background activity. That doesn't mean nothing is happening. A lot of these volcanoes have earthquakes in their background, and they have swarms in their background activity. Each volcano has its own personality. Mount Baker has very, very few shallow earthquakes actually has quite a few deep earthquakes that look like something is, that magma is either coming into the system or is cooling under there. Now, go to Mount Rainier, we have a few earthquakes a week. Uh, most of the earthquakes that are happening at Mount Hood happen within these swarms of activity. Go down south and get to a place like Crater Lake where there is very few earthquakes anywhere in the system at Crater Lake. They can have unique eruption styles as well. There are some Cascade volcanoes, like Mount Hood, for example, that erupt pretty monotonous or very homogeneous compositions. It doesn't have as many explosive eruptions uh, by far as Mount St. Helens does. It does have that same lahar potential, so those volcanic mud flows like we did see at Mount St. Helens, and that sector collapse, the collapse of the flank of the volcano. Understanding these volcanoes' personalities helps scientists recognize when something more unusual is happening. Mount Adams is one of those volcanoes that has been very quiet in its history. And so we typically see one earthquake up there every two to three years. That changed in September of 2024, when six earthquakes were recorded just that month. Six is not a lot of earthquakes to have in a month at any volcano. But when you go from something that hasn't had any to that, then it's something that we felt like we needed to get some more details on. Prior to this, there was only one permanent monitoring station near Mount Adams. The USGS jumped at the opportunity to deploy three additional temporary seismic stations to create a larger footprint. If we can see what's going on under there in a little bit more detail, then that's an opportunity for us to understand more about where the magma might be moving, if it's magmatic, magmatically related, if it's fault related, if it's gas related. Through January, a total of 12 earthquakes were recorded at Mount Adams. The strongest, a 2.0. That earthquake activity has died down, but monitoring is ramping up. The USGS plans to deploy four new permanent monitoring stations there. The first two are expected to be set up this summer but that's still just a handful compared to the 20 plus stations placed on and around Mount St. Helens. Why the disparity? There's several volcanoes in the Cascades that are very high threat volcanoes. And what that means is that they have an active eruptive history and they, there's a population that's exposed to the hazards from that volcano. Volcanoes are ranked through the National Volcano Early Warning System that evaluates that combination of eruptive history and population exposure. When you put those together, it's not, Mount Adams is not at the highest threat tier. It's actually at the second tier down, which is still a, a high threat volcano, but that doesn't quite meet the level that say Mount St. Helens or Mount Hood or, or Mount Rainier do right nearby there. And we're really sort of concentrating on improving the monitoring and 
interpreting the data from those really very high threat volcanoes. The iconic peaks of Mount Hood, Mount Adams, Mount St. Helens, and Mount Rainier are iconic and easily recognizable. But volcanic features are much closer to many of our backyards than we may realize. That's true for many things. Even the smaller volcanoes throughout Portland, like Rocky Butte and Mount Tabor, those are old little volcanoes that are right within city limits. Rocky Butte and Mount Tabor are part of what's called the Boring Volcanic Field. Named for Boring, Oregon, not because the volcanoes are boring. <laughs> it was formed through distributed volcanism. Instead of having a central vent that erupts many times and produces a large, long-lived volcano like St. Helens or Hood, you can also have magma that pops up to the surface in little one-off eruptions. The Boring Volcanic Field, shown here in the blue and orange shaded areas, consists of 80 known volcanic vents, marked by red dots. And it's not the only one. And while the Boring Volcanic Field in Portland hasn't been active in quite some time, I think the most recent eruption was 68,000 years ago, there are other volcanic fields in Oregon that have erupted very recently. So if anyone's driven the pass, Mackenzie Pass or Santiam Pass, and you cross those lava fields, that is a distributed volcanic field that erupted very frequently for a couple thousand years up to about 1,500 years ago. If activity does start to ramp up on any volcano, the USGS will raise the alert level. Green means normal background activity. Yellow, or advisory, is next. That means there are signs of elevated unrest. Then comes orange, or watch level. The volcano is showing heightened or escalating unrest or an eruption is underway but poses limited hazards. And finally, red, or warning level. A hazardous eruption is imminent, underway, or suspected. We're not gonna go from background level to advisory overnight. We're not gonna go from advisory to an eruption. We're, we're not gonna go from kind of background level to an eruption overnight, but as I said, in, in 2004, Mount St. Helens went from kind of background level to an explosion within a week. So it can progress pretty rapidly. In the meantime, these scientists will keep watching, studying, and learning, and say they'll be ready the next time one of our volcanoes wakes up. And we are doing a good job of monitoring these volcanoes, and we will see changes, and we know what the background is, and we'll see something out of the ordinary. Jesse Satin, K2 News.